Our topic of conversation is Chi Kune Do. Earlier today, uh, we had a meditation, and I think that Bang has some interesting things to say about Chi Kune Do coming from his own perspective. Um, with his experience, he had some martial arts experience, you know, before joining the school, and um, you know, I'm thankful to see that he, you know, he does have the understanding of which I agree with, and I want to share his perspective um, on this video as we discuss this topic together. So, the topic is Jeet Kune Do. Um, can it really exist at this current state when Bruce Lee has passed away for over 40 years? Is there such a thing as legitimate Jeet Kune Do um, out there? And, and the, also just the topic in general about the styles and the corruption in the martial arts and um, how people will claim certain styles of which they don't really have the right to claim. Yeah, because, uh, like I said, the topic we had in our meditation was very touching to me because we started about Adam and Eve and the serpent. How, I'm not going to go into too much religion, we'll keep it as martial arts, but on uh, me as a Christian, the serpent was like a, a teacher, but he was a corrupted teacher because he tried to give to Adam some information that he think it was the right way. When I say that, I'm related to martial art. Jeet Kune Do was created, we all know by Bruce Lee, but well, he's been gone for like oh, so many years now and people are still claiming Jeet Kune Do. And I think it's wrong because it's not the real Jeet Kune Do. First of all, Jeet Kune Do is not a style. It's a way of life, how you interpret it, certain style, make it your own. And if you know, it's corrupt nowadays. It is corrupt because I feel if the creator or the teacher is not here among us, how you know what they're teaching though is the real deal. Or it's not corrupt. Maybe it might have some influence from another style. And if that's the case, it should be, it's not a Jeet Kune Do no more. Because it's, it got influence from different styles. Could be Wing Chun, or could be Taekwondo, or could be anything. So it really is not original, pure style like Jeet Kune Do or, or a way of thinking as Bruce Lee. Like I said before, uh, sometimes too much knowledge could be a corruption, especially if the knowledge you you acquire is not the proper knowledge. Like I said back to the religion part of it, Adam and the serpent. Adam was was good at the point living happily the way he was without that extra knowledge. Because the creator, if he wanted him to know the knowledge we know now, he would have given it to him from the beginning, but he didn't. That's why it was the fruit of knowledge, which some people try to say was an apple, but nowhere in the Bible say it was an apple. The fruit of knowledge could be just wisdom that the Creator felt, probably felt at that time, he was not ready for it. It's the same thing I'm trying to say with the martial arts nowadays. The Creator of Jeet Kune Do was Bruce Lee. He no longer among us. So there's different labels of people that are claiming Jeet Kune Do, but how we know it's not being corrupted with their way of thinking, the way of doing things. So what I'm saying is like my, for example, I've been training in FNK now today uh, for five years now and there's been a lot of people been watching our videos over the years for the last five years since I've been here they might claim they're students of FNK but if they're not here present with us here training with us and inquiring the knowledge after the camera shut off how can you legitimately say that you know FNK like I put out there, a lot of people might not know what is FNK. It could stand for Freddie Mother Kung Fu, or it could stand for different type of style that we do here. So if you're not here with us, you cannot claim FNK. The same thing with Bruce Lee. If Bruce Lee is not here with us, we cannot claim we know Jeet Kune Do. Yes, they got good teachers that was under him, the students, that which I do respect a lot, that teach it. But even though that person that teaching it, uh, they can't really call it Jeet Kune Do. It could teach what Bruce Lee taught him at the time, certain moves, certain techniques, 
And it stopped right there, it died with Bruce Lee, but now he might create his own style from where he came from. So therefore he should have called it his style of way of thinking, not Jeet Kune Do. And that's what I think is people all the time ask me when they see me, okay, you train with Freddie Mello, Freddie Lee, what kind of style you do? What, what, first of all, what's my style? I would say, that if I were not to be smart, I would say, well, Kung Fu. Because there's no style when we come to training. We do all type of stuff here. Or I could even create my own style. Because everybody here, you can learn the technique. But at the end of the day, when you're inspiring or you're fighting with somebody, you're going to do something that is your own imagination, your own creation, based on the spontaneously, at the time, at the situation. Because maybe what we teach her at the time he's fighting a life fighting, street fighting with somebody, he might do something that we have not teach her or something that we don't we don't use here, but he's doing it, so therefore he can't really call it F and K. The same thing when you represent the school outside the school, you might do something that we don't we don't come down, like maybe drinking drugs, or whatever, maybe beating a woman. We don't do that type of stuff here. But well, then again he can't use the level and say, Hey, I learned it from F and K. Because that's not what we do here. So that's why the topic is important to me because a lot of people claiming stuff, maybe they're claiming it, but then when Bruce Lee was alive now, he might not approve it. Because he's like, anyway, I don't do that. I didn't teach you that. I don't know what you get that from. Definitely it's not F, that is not Jeet Kune Do. So that's what I'm saying. It's very, very got to be very careful when people claiming labels. And if it's not directly in a family train, let's say, like for example, my C for effing. Freddie Model Lee, and let's say he passed into another world, let's say no, his, his son going to take it over, which is Brandon, and he continued teaching the wisdom as his father, that he was still considered still pure because he teach with his father, he trained with his father, so he acquired the knowledge from his father, but somebody that don't train, train with us, they cannot claim anything. Okay? That's what I'm saying about this corruption in the martial art. You cannot claim and say you do certain stuff if you don't actually train with that person, if you wasn't trained under this with, or if you're not in that school. Because sometimes people could learn stuff from a teacher and they could branch and open up their own school. That's different because now you're still in contact with the school. You're still sharing information. You still maintain a certain level of training. Like me, uh, even if I was to move on to another, do my own thing, and I was still want to call it FNK too, I still got to check with my Sifu and make sure we're still on the same path because I don't want a situation that, that he taught me something and I'm over there somewhere else. Let's say I move to another state and I open up my own school FNK too and I'm training something and it's not FNK. It's still, it's not FNK. We have to keep the same level of, of, of teaching and I have to travel back and forth to maintain that wisdom from him. So therefore, that when people say they claim certain things like, oh, I know Jeet Kune Do. Really? What is Jeet Kune Do? Oh, this is this and this. I don't think that Jeet Kune Do. I myself do not know Jeet Kune Do, but based on the reading and the book that I've been reading from Bruce Lee and his, and his videos and his movies, I see what he does, what he acts a certain way, and somebody on the floor doing grappling on the floor or whatever they do on the floor, I know for sure that's not Jeet Kune Do. But they might claim it, Jeet Kune Do, but you see, what I'm saying is, you got to be careful at the labels that people claim. Because I know for a fact, somebody cannot claim something. If I know, I didn't see Bruce Lee do it in the movie. I see him like in one situation, he went on the floor and did one, one uh, move on the floor. If that person do that, and I see the same thing in the movie, I say, okay, Bruce Lee did it because he did it in the movie. But he started doing other stuff on the floor, rolling up, doing all this stuff on the floor. I said, wait a minute. I'm going to go back in this book. I don't see him teach none of that. I go back into all this movie. I didn't see no one do none of the movies. So I cannot say, agree and say that's Jeet Kune Do because I didn't see Bruce Lee do it. And that's the topic that we're talking about. I don't know if I see for agree on that. Well, you know, generally what you're saying is something that I, that I agree with. Um, there's certain things that we might have a little um, contrast in view. But the general thing that's really important to understand is that Jeet Kune Do, you know, is supposed to be living. You know, it's like a living expression. So truth is supposed to be living, it's not supposed to be dead. So dead is tradition. And when Bruce was uh, living, you know, he 
spoke against tradition because of the limitations of it. You know, right. dead limitations is like dead teachings. Like Wing Chun, the creator of it, um, maybe died over 400 years ago, and then you're learning something dead. And he knew that there's something wrong with that because in, in fighting, it's spontaneous, it's living. You can't just base um, this new situation that you're experiencing at the moment based on dead concepts. So Bruce Lee in itself, when he was living, he was living Jeet Kune Do, but as soon as he dies, then he becomes, his teachings can be stagnant and dead and fixated. So when you say, hey, you know, let me flip through the Jeet Kune Do book, make sure that he taught that as well. Oh, he didn't teach that, it's not Jeet Kune Do. That's an example of something that's dead. It's like, he, when he's alive, he can modify the book, he can edit it, be like, okay, that, that, there's a mistake in that, that part, let me fix that. Or there's a mistake in this part, let me fix that. Or you know what, this technique is really not that effective, so let's get rid of that one. Um, I like this technique, so let's add that one in. But since he's not living, he's not there to do that. So he's not be able, be able to direct like what is going to be a part of Jeet Kune Do and what's not. You know, if somebody comes in with a gun and starts just shooting people randomly and says, oh, that's Jeet Kune Do, like he could just stand like, no, that's not Jeet Kune Do. In Jeet Kune Do, you don't just go around killing innocent people for no reason. But then somebody else will be like, no, that is Jeet Kune Do. It's efficient. It's effective. Just kill a bunch of people all in, 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 in a split second. You know, he could say, no, that's not. He could decide whether or not he wants to integrate firearms training into his Jeet Kune Do practice or eliminate it. Because you look within his book, you don't see him talking about guns. Exactly. You don't see him even talking about nut chunks. Right. You don't see him talking about long sticks. You just see some, some type, some, you know, a few pages on grappling techniques, some locks. You see like a lot of punching and kicking and elbows and, you know, you know, his methods of unarmed combat, but you don't see the weapons and all these other things. He didn't, you know, he spoke a little bit on the spirituality, but it's just like a, a basic foundation of what Jeet Kune Do is, but it's not Jeet Kune Do in its entirety because the Jeet Kune Do in its entirety was within Bruce and his heart. He didn't have to put anything in writing. He didn't have to make any movies, but he made about five movies. He made a few books, but then even the books were not completed. It needed, it needed to be edited. It needed to be reorganized. It needed to be basically cleaned up by John Little in order to be presented to the public. You know, but he would write things on scratch paper and then put it to the side. Write something else on scratch paper, put it on the side. He had all these ideas going on and he was just he was just marking down the ideas. So what he's saying that Jeet Kune Do is only limited to what he wrote down? Is Jeet Kune Do only limited to what he expressed in the movies? No, he had the potential to express even more. He could have made a lot more movies, could have made a lot more books. He could have made a lot more interviews, a lot more, more, more um, material out there. But he died so quickly that we only have segments of Jeet Kune Do left. So what you gotta do is you gotta take those segments and try to understand it to the best that you can and then make the Jeet Kune Do within you. But you can't say that what you practice is Jeet Kune Do because you're not Bruce Lee. Because right. then you're confusing people. Because right. then the mass murderer who just killed 30 people in a row could say, I practice Jeet Kune Do. And then the case fighter would be like, I practice Jeet Kune Do. And then I'm saying, I practice Jeet Kune Do. Jet Li's saying, I practice Jeet Kune Do. Jackie Chan says, I practice Jeet Kune Do. Like, why are you even saying that? Because none of us are Bruce Lee. Right. And none of this is the real Jeet Kune Do. We have all been inspired by Bruce Lee. You talk to Jackie Chan, he's been inspired by Bruce Lee. I've been inspired by Bruce Lee. Diane Ye's been inspired by Bruce Lee. You've been inspired by Bruce Lee. Jet Li's been inspired by Bruce Lee. Chuck Norris has been inspired by Bruce Lee. Danny Sano's been inspired by Definitely. Bruce Lee. Like, a lot of people in this world have been inspired by Bruce Lee. I won't be surprised if Floyd Mayweather's been inspired by Bruce Lee. But you have to do your own thing. You can't claim, hide behind Jeet Kune Do and be like, this is Jeet Kune Do when it's not. Right. Floyd Mayweather went into boxing, become the greatest boxer in the world. You know, Chuck Norris is expressing his own ex martial arts. Van Damme expresses his own expression in the martial arts. Pe you gotta do your own thing and say that, hey, I've been inspired by Bruce Lee, but that's not Jeet Kune Do. Because exactly. you're not being true to yourself. Because right. you're lying to people. And you're lying to yourself. And you're confusing the public. And you're pretty much going against Bruce's teachings because Bruce is telling you to be yourself. So why are you claiming Jeet Kune Do of a label that you didn't create yourself? You pretty much stole his label for why? To make money off of it? To hide behind them? To, to, to you know, like, you know, like, why are you doing that? You know, and, and, and that's the problem with what's going on out there. Is that it's not that I don't respect people that have been inspired by Bruce Lee because they're just like me. They like Bruce Lee, I like Bruce Lee. That's why I put Bruce Lee's photo in the front to let people know, hey, if you like Bruce Lee, I like Bruce Lee. Maybe we might connect. 
But I'm not saying I teach Jeet Kune Do. When the people come through the door, what I tell them, what I teach is similar to Jeet Kune Do. But I don't say I teach Jeet Kune Do. You can only learn that from Bruce Lee, and he's dead. But if you want to learn it from him, then okay, watch his movies, read his books. You can okay, go ahead, learn from something that's not living. You, you think that book's gonna spar with you? You think that movie's gonna spar with you? No, if I'm living right now, I'll spar with you. You know, and and you know, I am a martial artist in my own right. Even though Bruce Lee has inspired me, it doesn't mean that I haven't learned from other people. You know, like we talk about Dad, and I learned a lot from him too. I learned from a lot of people that people don't know. Right. I learned even from you. Right. I learned from my other students. I learned from why, why give all the credit to Bruce Lee. Look, what about my father? Exactly. You know, what about my, my, my first martial arts teacher? What about everybody in kind of my life? Why do I give all the credit to Bruce Lee? Look, that's not fair to, to, to the, all the other people in my life. And not only that, I've learned stuff on my own right that I discovered on my own. Right. You know, so it's not just Bruce Lee that taught me everything I know. It's actually the whole world that's taught me you know, everything that I've experienced is what I know and that what I teach is what I do. Now, I have to build my own name. Not everybody knows who Sifu Freddy Lee is, but as you build it, then people, more and more people know it's just a slow building process. So I'm lucky, I'm thankful to be on YouTube. I'm thankful to connect with people all over the world. I'm thankful to have the amount of subscribers that I do have, the, the amount of views that I do have. Because then people now, there might not be that many people that know, but at least some people know. And right. then through me, they, they also know who you are exactly. and other students. And then we build our own name, reputation, our own name. This is not Jeet Kune Do, but we, have, we all love Bruce and we're trying to live up to his standards and we're trying to express the martial arts according to our vision. You know, we don't want to roll around the ground unless we absolutely have to. You know, we want to remain standing up and fighting. We want to, you know, Bruce Lee's teaching the art of fighting without fighting. Let's, let's, let's try to work on some of that. Let's work on our meditation. Let's let's be efficient in what we do. You know, like don't call wrestling boxing when it's not. You know, so when you got a bunch of people that have been wrestling for fifteen years and they say, Oh, just because they learned a few punches and kicks, oh we practice Jeet Kune Do. Mm. Like you've been wrestling for fifteen years. How, you, you're a wrestler. And just because you learn a few punches and kicks, you call it Jeet Kune Do because it's because it's efficient, because it's real, because you you know you could ground and pound because it works. I mean no. You know, it's like, like you have to be able to express your own vision of the martial arts. You know, I respect people who can, could build themselves up and claim their own stuff. You know, um, you know so I criticize some people out there, you know, for, for, for not just Jeet Kune Do, but just hiding behind labels in general. You know, people say, oh, I, 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 I teach Wing Chun. I te if somebody else says I teach Tai Chi. Like, who gave you the right to do that? Did the person that created the Wing Chun system say that you're qualified to teach what they what they created? Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. 400 years ago, this person died. Who gave you the right to say that you could teach something that the creator created over 400 years ago in another country? Mm -hmm. we're, we're in America, and then there's people claiming Wing Chun that don't even live in China. And then the creator is Chinese that lives in China that died over 400 years ago, but then they're claiming Win Chun today, and that's what they teach. That's just a roundabout way of the backdoor way of saying that I teach Jeet Kune Do, but instead of saying they teach Jeet Kune Do, they say they teach Win Chun because it's hard, to, it's, it's 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 easier it's easier to deceive people to say that when you say that you teach Win Chun because because that's what a lot of people teach it, are doing. Oh, I teach Taekwondo. Well, what about the, the creators of the Taekwondo? Because I think there's three creators. Did they tell you that you're qualified to teach that? You know, and then Aikido, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a problem with all of it. Unless it's the real creator right now, today, where he says, like right now in this school, I, I have my own expression, Bang's learning directly from me. And I say, he's really in this school. You see him on camera. You see him sparring. You see videos with him. He's right here, right here. He's training with me right now. But it doesn't mean that, you know, he has what I have. But at least it, it means that he's training with me. And is he qualified to teach what I know? Well, maybe certain aspects of the art he can't. And I'll let him know which parts mm -hmm. that he could share. You know, if I want to open up another location and have Bang like run that school, that's up to me. You know, and I can allow him to do that, but it all has to base back on 
my decision and whether or not he's living up to the standards or right. expressing the martial art according to my, my vision. Right. But Bang is a, is a human being. He has the right to do whatever he wants to do. He could quit the school and never come back. He could, if he wanted to, go through, do a lot of crime and then end up in jail. And then is he still representing FMK at that moment? Know. You know, like not at that moment because if he's doing stuff that I don't agree with, then we lot we became disconnected. Just like I've become disconnected with students, some students in the past, doing is certain things or saying certain things that I don't agree with, and then we disconnect. That's how relationships are. There's there's a connection, and then there's potential disconnection. That's what living a living relationship is. So in order to represent this school, it has to be a living relationship, and the principles have to be held up to a high standard. But things change. You know before. Because I even didn't even update you guys, you know, I, I had this whole safe sparring method and we've been going with that. But now I'm formulating ideas of a sparring method that might not be too, too safe. But at the same time, it's, repping, it's representing more of the reality of com real combat and what it is. You know, so there's, there's the experimentation of different things that can happen through time. And things change. Because people be like, oh, you know... Sifu Fred Lee is supposed to be this way, just like you talked about out there. He's supposed to be this, he's supposed to be married with five kids, stay with the same wife for the rest of his life until he dies. That's what a Sifu does, that's what a good person does, that's what a you know, Christian does, or that's what a moral person would do. But then why all of a sudden is Sifu separated, divorced, with somebody else? Then it just jolts your mind, like, no, that's not right. It's not supposed to be doing that. Like, things change. You know, why is, why is Sifu engaging in, in combat that's more dangerous now than before? You know, things change. So we need to be able to change, change with change. And really, it is my expression of my art, and it's a living thing. But Jeet Kune Do is not a living thing because Bruce Lee passed away. So people could, could speculate whether or not would he support um, the UFC? Would he have supported cage fighting? People could speculate about that. Well, I could spe you know, you could also speculate, would he, would he support, like, mass killings? Like, going into school and killing, like, 50 people in a row? Would he support that? I mean, people could question stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, through my study, I don't think he would support the UFC. I honestly don't think he would, because it's not real fighting. And he was about real fighting, and he was about, like, basically, spirituality and meditation, and that's not what UFC represents. You know, he was, he, they were boxing matches back in his day but he didn't get involved in that because that's he, he didn't want to be a boxer you know he didn't want to be a kickboxer he didn't want to be a tie boxer he wanted to express martial arts in its purity in real combat real fighting you know and 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 he, he he expressed it the best that he could within the movies through choreographed fights but at the same time like i'm not bruce lee and i'm not trying to be but I'm trying to, in a way, carry on with where he left off, where his work was, because th he didn't finish as far as being able to bring more respect towards the Chinese people and the culture and the Chinese martial arts, because there's still a lot of disrespect going on yeah. out there. And, you know, it's just sad that he's just one Chinese American that became famous in America, and he wasn't even famous when he was living. He became famous after he died. Wow. And then after that, there is no other Chinese American person in America that has even 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 close that to that sort of respect. Not even close. Because even Yao Ming was not Chinese American. He's straight Chinese. Hmm. You know, Jeremy Lin is Chinese American, but he had a short short run of fame and then it just disappeared in a way. But there's no like really famous Chinese American. Jackie Chan is straight Chinese. Jet Li straight Chinese. Donnie Yen, I don't know, he might be Chinese and American, but his level of fame is really nothing compared to Bruce's. I don't think nobody's compared to Bruce yet at that level. You know, so there's something about the Chinese martial arts that is, is different than the Western expression of combat sport, boxing, competitiveness. There's, there's, there's skill set there, there's talent there, but then there's humbleness, there's compassion, there's love, there's spirituality and meditation behind it. And most of the combat sport, or the combat sport that we see, and most of the things that are expressed that are non-Chinese, they're, they're not balanced enough with the yin energy. It's like overly yang. Yeah, it's overly yang. I see that for it to the point that the referee got to intervene 
if somebody could actually get seriously hurt or seriously killed, like killed for real, seeing that. Yeah. Then people died in that room before. Mm hmm Yeah. That definitely is not Chikung mm -hmm. though. You know, so I mean this is and we bring it back when we bring it to the religion, it's the same thing religion. People will be like, Well, they're trying to live like Jesus but then there's people that are living lives that 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 don't represent his teachings. Exactly. And then they call themselves Christians, right? Exactly. It's the same problems with religion. Exactly. You know? So like, who is right, who's wrong? And that's where we're at right now. People be like, well, Bruce Lee would have supported cage fighting. And there'd be like all these people, like you say, yeah, Bruce Lee is the father of MMA. And they're like, no, he's, he's the, the complete opposite. You know, he's not, he's the, he was speaking against that. You know, Bruce Lee was representing like real martial arts, real combat, like, and just, just being a real human being. An artist. He was a true artist. These people are just fighters and representing violence and greed and corruption and ego and pride. Yes, some of those aspects are within Bruce Lee, but Bruce Lee was, he, he had other aspects that, that overshadowed those darker aspects. You know, like he, he was beating up people in all his movies, but then at the same time there was a scene where he's, he was teaching the art of fighting without fighting. And right? also the compassion art of compassion too, because you see the scene in which you fighting with Chuck Norris at the end, he was very compassionate with Chuck Norris and put on his belt on his clothes, clothes on top of Chuck Norris, in which in the USC they don't have no kind of compassion. Yeah. So you know, therefore, that's not Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Because, yeah, he wasn't jumping up and joining all happy and smiling and right. celebrating. And, and he didn't really, he didn't want to kill Chuck Norris. He was just looking at him like, he's basically not and said, don't get back up. Right. And then Chuck Norris is like, you know what, I might as well just die right die doing what I love to do. I'd rather die than live. You know what I'm saying? Yes. At that moment, he's like, just kill me. And then Bruce, Bruce reluctantly killed him. Right. That's like, without verbally saying it, you could see it, you could see the message. And it takes intelligence exactly. and wisdom to see that. I mean, at your age, at my age, we could see that. But for the common person, the teenager, they don't see that. They say, oh, you know, he, he was all about fighting and violence too, look at this. But first, it's a movie, second, the way that he fought him and the way that he, you know, killed him at the end, it wasn't like, he gave him a chance to get up and decide for himself. Do you want to get killed or do you want to live? He gave him that opportunity. Exactly. You and know? That's why people got to pay yeah, very close attention that the stuff we see in cage fighting right now, I don't have nothing really to say negative or positive about it, but if you see, you can't say that Bruce Lee created that because there's no sense of compassion. Like I said, every scene that Bruce Lee involved in, in the movie, there's a sense of compassion and meditation and spirituality. And in the cage fight, neither zero of that, zero compassion, zero spirituality, like compassion to your opponent. Because I've seen a lot of time when it, the opponent is down, they want to beat into submission, like, like, okay, you better not move, I'm going to continue beating on you. But you can see in Bruce Lee, in the movies, it's always compassion. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go as far as say this that Bruce Lee book, Bruce Lee books, is like the Bible to martial artists and martial art because uh, if you're Christian and, and you read the Bible, you understand what the, the Creator was trying to say. And if to me personally, if it's not in the book, if it's not in the Bible, I can't really say that it's true because if it's not everything that we need to know is in the bible okay everything that god created everything that god said everything that god expects us to do everything that we're supposed to be enlightened it's, it's in the book if somebody come up and says something that is not in the book how is who is me to say you're wrong i only could go what's in the book the same thing with the bruce lee's and bruce lee teaching the, and the book that he made when he was hurt in the scene in the movie, he hurt his back. He started writing because it's not a choice what to do. If somebody started claiming and saying, This is Bruce Lee, this is it, this is Bruce, this is Jeet Kune Do. And in none of this book, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, none of this book you talking about using a sword or to use a sword or this is a style of Jeet Kune Do with a sword. So if somebody claim and say, hey, Look at my style with a sword, this is Jeet Kune Do. Right there and there, I could tell you, by my knowledge, by my reading, that's not Jeet Kune Do. But somebody might claim and say, this is my Jeet Kune Do, this is the way I'm doing it with the sword, and using the sword, like just like you're using the hand, or the stick your hands technique, and we're doing it with the sword too. 
that's Jeet Kune Do. And I could frankly say that Bruce Lee is not here to defend himself, but I will say, based on my knowledge of reading the book, that's not Jeet Kune Do. The same thing that my Sifu said, that somebody start using guns and said it's the most Bruce Lee believed in going direct to the point, eliminate the stuff that is not useful and keep what's useful. And Bruce Lee could, he could say, well, I got a gun now. I don't need to go through all this martial art things. I don't need to spar. I don't need to do none of that. I got a gun. So no, I'm a black belt. But hey, Bruce Lee never said nothing about gun. And I sure there was gun back in those days. They had guns. But none of the movies that he did, none of his writing that he did, he talked about gun. He didn't even have, there's so much school right now talking about how to disarm a gun, somebody with a gun. Come on, be real. If somebody have a gun in point and facing me, I'm going to take the time and say, oh, I'm going to disarm you. Fuck you. Give me my, my, no. And I can't say that's Jeet Kune Do either because Bruce Lee never taught that how to disarm a gun, how to use a gun. As a matter of fact, in none of his movies, if that's the case, they could have used guns. He could have used a gun, say, okay, yeah, I'm Bruce Lee, but guess what? I got a nine right here, so that's why I'm going to kill you with it. So, no, he didn't use no gun, so he didn't use the expression of the gun. So, therefore, people cannot claim and say, because they use gun, that's Chikundo. That may be the modern way of uh, self-defense now, the more practical way of doing it. If you get a gun permit, because of the way crime is right now, yes, that's the way I'm going. Unfortunately, which I don't believe in gun either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't believe in gun either, but that's the, that's the modern technique of Kung Fu right, right now. Gun. You could call it Gun Fu, whatever you want to call it, or Gun Jikun Do. But that's the life, the time we're living in right now. But at the same token, we cannot call it Jikun Do. Because Bruce Lee himself didn't talk about gun. Bruce Lee himself never used gun. Bruce Lee never tried to stop a bullet. Bruce Lee never tried to disarm the body with a gun. Okay, so we got to be very uh, understandable of uh, the knowledge we get on what we call Jeet Kune Do or Jeet Kune Do. So, I, if I have a Jeet Kune Do book, this to me the Bible of martial art. I read it. I could say I'm, I'm inspired by Jeet Bruce Lee. I could say I read his scriptures then and I practice his stuff. And I could do some move that I learned from the book. I could say, I learned this from Bruce Lee because this is his teaching. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. I don't know more to say. I mean, th I think this, this video shows just the differences between just humans, you know, like even though you're a student here and you study here, you've been here for about five years in and out, um, we still are not thinking exactly alike and this is going to be impossible, you know, because we're different people. You know, like, it's just all you could do really is just be in the journey to martial arts and learn as much as you can and and grow mm -hmm. you know um but you know we don't see everything completely the same but generally we could communicate we could communicate and try to come to understanding you know um but bruce lee when you say Jeet Kune Do, if you think of it in terms of this if he didn't change, if he didn't say Jeet Kune Do and he just came up with the Jun Fan Kung Fu and that's it, which is basically just Bruce Lee's Kung Fu, and he just stuck to that, what the examples you're making would sound even more ridiculous. You know, somebody's wearing a, using a sword. This is, this is Bruce Lee's Kung Fu. Well, are you Bruce Lee? No. Well, how's that Bruce Lee's Kung Fu if, if you're not Bruce Lee, right? If he's shooting a gun, this is Bruce Lee's Kung Fu. Are you Bruce Lee? No. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just more easily identifiable, the ridiculousness of it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, um, and like you're saying an example, like off camera people aren't learning what you're learning off camera. Same thing with Bruce. He, he didn't put everything in writing. It's impossible. He couldn't have. So there's probably things that he was teaching that weren't put in writing that we don't know about. Right. So we just... Um, you can only learn from what is there from him. The, the, that's le legitimately his writings, legitimately his movies. And just take that f segment, that fragment, make the best of it, and then basically add or take away from, from it in which to express your own in the martial arts. You know, so 
we both use Bruce Lee's teachings as a solid um, foundational Vision. structure of what we do here in addition to what we train in in which to prove to ourselves whether or not this is something that's going to be effective for us you know not just in a combative level but also like in a spiritual level and a meditative level as far as like handling situations in a very intelligent way so that it doesn't over escalate you mm -hmm. know when you talk about things that you encounter at work people say certain things to you and you learn how to calm down exactly. and not over escalate it so then you both don't get fired or something right. like that right. like just learning how to handle situations like that is a part of the martial arts that enhances your your your, your path and you may have learned you may or may not have learned that from Bruce Lee. You might have learned it some from Osho, learned some from me, or learned some from other books or other people, or you might even taught yourself how to handle a situation with more intelligence. You know, and um, just give respect to Bruce Lee, but you know, don't 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 confuse people or mislead people um, and misrepresent. You know, because even if you are a great martial artist, you still shouldn't claim Ji Kune Do because right. why why are you gonna miss why are you gonna underestimate you yourself? You want you create something even beyond Ji Kune Do. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Like even if you are a great martial artist, so don't limit yourself to Ji Kune Do if you're a great martial artist. And if you're not a great martial artist then don't claim Ji Kune Do because you're making Ji Kune Do look bad. Exactly. You know, so either way it goes you shouldn't claim Ji Kune Do. I just think that using his name and, and his thing for fame or money purpose. They, they, they feel that what they know is not good enough, so they want to use Bruce Lee. Like the movie that's coming out now. Yeah. You know, I could see why the family is upset because they're using Bruce Lee's name, and they're trying to claim and say it's not about Bruce Lee, it's, uh, it's about a confrontation between him and his, and his rival back then, and somebody from the a Caucasian person telling the story. Yeah. They're trying to make a scene about that Caucasian guy telling the story. But the reality is, that movie would not get some more publicity if his real name Bruce Lee was not mentioned in it. Yes, yes. It's the same thing, you know. People trying to use somebody that already established instead of trying to come up with their own name and build off of that, like what yeah. you're doing here. You're not using Ji Kune Do. You're using your own name and your own expression to the point that before when you was um wasn't that famous i remember we used to train in a smaller place than this you know in the basement when i just saw those videos you didn't have too many followers mm -hmm. but as your follower and your subscription start growing and growing and growing now all of a sudden people are paying attention so now all of a sudden people are trying to attack you why because when you when you're nobody and you you nobody, know people don't care, but when you somebody, I have some people, people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing. Same thing with these people, instead of they using their own style, their own name, they want to go on Bruce Lee, they want to jump on, oh, let me just start on Bruce Lee's name, Jeet Do. Why? He's dead, he's not even alive. Start with your own creation, like me. If I was to decide to do my own thing, I wouldn't call it Jeet Do. And... I would probably wouldn't call it F and K if I want to do my own thing. I would call it Bando. Would you like that? Bando. Mm -hmm. But you see what I'm saying, fellows, people out there, YouTube people, YouTube nation. I will not use somebody's name to, especially to exploit it for money. I would have to do my own thing, start with my own style. At least you know, like Sifu said, if we decided to do like Brian Shaw F and K, then that's one thing. Then I have to be under him keep on the curriculum under him and stay at his level where you want me to be. And, and the one thing that's, I think that one thing that we mentioned too is if you created your own thing, sometimes, say say hypothetically you became like worldly famous, right? Mm -hmm. Bang, doll, whatever, right? And you got like 50 million subscribers. Right. Then it'd be proper to give respect to where you started by saying, hey, you know, I started training with F and K, right? Or right. I started training with Stephen Freddie Lee. So then people will be like, "Oh, you know." Then you you share your fame to the people that helped you get exactly. there. Exactly. That's the proper way to do it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like, that's, you came from. Because then there's people that would, that will, that will all they'll get famous and they'll be like, "No, I didn't learn from anything from mm -hmm, these people." Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, you know those types yeah, of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they be like, "Yeah, yeah, I got here by myself. I didn't. No, you I, didn't. I, didn't I didn't get any help." Like this, like me pretending like. 
like I don't study Osho, like hiding that from people and just be like, no, it's all me. Like, no, like I learn a lot from, and I'm very, I always push people towards that source, like Osho, Lao Tzu, Bruce Lee. Like I'm respected, I respect those sources, but at the same time, I'm not saying that, that that's me. I have my own teachings. And honestly, you know, with my teachings, it's not even come close to what Osho expresses. I respect him as a very great spiritual leader, um, teacher. Um, but basically, we pay our respects to Bruce Lee, but we're not going to say that what we teach is Bruce Lee's stuff. Oh, Jeet Kune Do. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, but we pay our respects to it. And creating your own is, is a great thing, but um, it's also great to work together because if you don't work together, then how much are you going to grow? Exactly. Because, I mean, even you and your wife is, is a team. It's a team. We're definitely know, it's, a it's, team. You're not just by yourself. I mean, you got your wife and you create your children. Is You're building a family. Mm -hmm. and that's what martial arts is about. Like, how could I get anywhere without my students, without my supporters, without YouTube, without the subscribers and the people that watch? How could I get anywhere? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you need your supporting cast and your supporting family and people. You know, and even Bruce Lee, there wouldn't be any Bruce Lee movies without the people that were in the movies with them. Right. You know, so, but yeah. <laughs> it's a long video. <laughs> <laughs> it's not